Welcome to Abby Clubhouse, where they look at the Bandai Asia 1144 MS Hanger. Now I'm sharing this odd little thing with you because Bandai just suddenly announced that there's this new mobile suit hanger box set that's going to be available at the Gundam base right away starting August 7th, 2021. And those seem to be the same thing as the one that was included in the January 2014 issue of Dengeki Hobby Magazine. But this is a good chance to look at this obscure MS hanger that you've very likely never seen. And it's a good opportunity to talk about the forgotten underdogs who made this, Bandai Asia. Alright, story time. This product was made by Bandai Asia, who were based in Hong Kong. Now I'm not entirely certain if they're still around today. Bandai Namco Asia is a thing that exists, but Bandai Namco's own company history makes no mention of either branch at all, whether establishments or change in names or anything, so I can't speak for certain. But one thing is for sure, that this entity today very much does not manage their own products, and they're largely in charge of regional distribution of the products alone. When using the Wayback Machine, the first archived instance of the Bandai Asia website was in February 2002, so that gives us some hint to about when the old Bandai Asia was set up. And like I said before, Bandai Asia, being just a regional office, somehow got permission to start their own experimental product line, and they struck gold. Mobile Suit in Action began in 1999, and it was a runaway hit, not only because of its incredible value, giving you everything but the kitchen sink, but it was also very well known for making just completely senseless and awesome things like the Zomel from Stardust Memory and the Big Zam. And basically everything else that Bandai in Japan was just too sheepish to make. Tell me in the comments below if you were lucky enough to have bought any of the really crazy releases. And even more importantly, this line saw great success in the American market as well, and most older English-speaking fans will remember this line very fondly for having introduced them to Gundam. And this is not at all a mistake. Bandai of Japan saw the success of MS in action in the Asian markets, and they've long held the philosophy that in the American markets, people like action figures way more than they like model kits. So they introduced the MS in action line in North America. And Bandai's judgment was on the money, if you happen to have fond memories of MS in action figures when you were small. And Bandai being Bandai, they're actually still doing that up to this day with the Gundam Universe line. And if you've watched enough of my feature videos, you'll realize that a lot of what Bandai does now is actually just stuff they've already been doing for years before. Bandai Asia's next successful release was the SD Action Figure line. <laughs> no, seriously, that is the name of the entire line, and I never noticed that in my book here they misspelled the name. Now before you go typing down below, but they're actually called SD Archive, or they're actually called Deformation. Uh, yes, but both of those lines were very quickly abandoned by Bandai, and those came into custody of Bandai Asia, who reused the products and added their own new figures later on. Now, some people believe that the products were developed by Bandai Asia in the first place because of how similar all their construction is, but it's largely an educated guess, and we don't have any concrete proof of any of that. Now, these actually sold okay, and if you don't have an MS in action figure, it's possible you had one of these SD ones, because there were quite a lot of them, and they were on the market for quite a while. Now, once again, these were much more popular in American markets, but maybe it just wasn't enough. With the merger of Bandai and Namco in 2005, a lot of restructuring followed, and the Wayback Machine tells us that at some point between June and July of 2006, Bandai Asia's website domain expired, and the site went offline. Whatever happened afterwards is a bit of a mystery, but at the very least, this was the end of the regional office producing their own products. So that's the world that MS Heng was born into being released in that very 2006 at an unspecified month, in the sunset of Bandai Asia's short existence. I have no reference as to how much these originally sold for, because mine was found in the corner of a store as leftover and discounted stock, so I really don't know how much it originally cost. The box only has photographs and no illustrations unless you count the Gundam and Core Booster here in the back that's painted over with the computer. We'll get back to the stuff printed on here a little bit. And even though it says EFSF version on here, there was never a Xeon version, which feels bittersweet when you realize that they left the door open with some hope that their product development could continue. The box measures 12 by 20.5 by 5 centimeters, and even though it's pretty small, it's got way more stuff inside than you might think. Because inside the box, you can see just how the parts fill up that entire thing. 
Now the one I have here has already been opened before, but really the only difference in here is that the parts used to come in an unsealed clear bag, which I replaced with the one right here. This is everything you get in the box, and immediately you may be surprised that you actually get this entire hanger plus the catapult as its own thing. And I bet a lot of you saw the front image on the box and assumed you just make one or the other, but no, Bandai Asia was a strong believer in price performance. And not only that, but the parts are pre-painted with the white lines here and the dark shading coming to you exactly as you see here. I didn't paint any of this. It doesn't tell us anywhere on the box or on any of the pieces what materials these are made from, but I'm almost certain that this is all ABS. The walls of the pieces are really thick at 2.2mm for the outer walls here and then still 1.4mm on the inner ones, so this stuff is made to be very very durable. Now we don't get any additional printed materials on the inside and everything we need to know is printed right onto the box in pretty funny broken English, like how it says hanger at the front with an ER, like those triangle things that you hang shirts with. But to start us off, on the side here it tells us to insert the every single pertaining parts. And it's actually true that you only need to put in this one panel here. And then it reminds us that there are two styles of mantlet setting and that mantlet that they refer to is actually this back piece that you put on. And yes, you're right, mantlet is absolutely not a real word. The catapult is assembled this way with the three big arrows and the text here saying, with the arrow position indicate. Funny as this is, if you think about it, this is also an indication of how the Bandai Asia office really wasn't in very good shape at the time anymore, and they clearly had no help when making this product. But anyway, this person did try his best and the other side gives us you may distribute with your favorite and not finishing that sentence before announcing it complete. And configure it your own style, complete. Uh, but what they mean here is that you can join the two parts in any way you want. We get a few more gems here like the arrester, which almost makes sense. And then the treadle, which isn't a real, oh, holy cow, it's a real word. All right then. The hangar base is called the cabin platform, which I don't know why it's called that, because it doesn't make sense in Chinese either. And then propel platform, which is quite sensible. But here's the rest of the tags if you want to pause and look at any of it. And in no time at all, like literally a minute or two, we have the MS hangar here all ready for action. And now let's take a moment to think about just how ambitious the design here is. The Mega House 1144 white base catapult deck from 2016 is actually the same thing that we have right here with the hanger and the catapult combo, right down to even how you can arrange the catapult in front of the hanger, only that this costs 14,000 yen and most sensible people really don't have that kind of shelf space for this. So exactly a decade before this crazy thing, Bandai Asia gave us the very perfectly sized representation of that exact same thing that almost anyone can easily have on display. I'm sure you'll agree that this would be something that a lot of people would love to buy today if this were still on the market. And you know what? What if the ones from the Gundam base aren't as nice as the one right here? Wouldn't that be a nice bit of double redemption for our boys in Bandai Asia? Let's look at the hangar in more detail. The entire hangar comes mostly assembled and all we need to do is slot this backplate onto here. The pre-assembled parts are secured with screws from the factory, so this is made as a toy product and it really isn't a model kit. The hydraulic arms on the back here have a sliding motion as they extend, so they look great on top of being functional. These allow the hanger to go from this flat position into this slightly raised one. And you can push the entire hanger back along the rails on the bottom, and these are ratcheted so they lock into preset spots. Then the hydraulics give it one more angle in this spot. You can push it all the way to the back here, and then the hydraulic arms give it one more final position. The platform for the feet here can also be placed in this upright position. In this way, the platform can always stay upright even when you move the hanger into its different positions. It's simple and it's elegant and it works way better than you might expect. Now not that there's any reason why this wouldn't work, but the entry grade RX-78 fits really nicely into the hanger. There aren't pegs or anything, so you just rest the mobile suit directly onto the hanger. So if you move it around really fast, the MS might fall off or slide around. And here it is with a gun cannon, which works fine as well, even though it's quite a bit bulkier. And then here's the original HG-RX-78, which is what this was actually made for, 
with its really big feet. I mean, it's really not a complicated thing, and it works exactly as it should, with that sliding action adding a lot of options to something as simple as a hanger. Of course, we get the second half of this beefy box with the catapult here, and the platforms for the feet actually aren't fixed in any way, and they simply sit on the two rails here, relying on gravity to keep them in place. You can slide them down just fine, and the ABS slides across each other very smoothly without leaving any scratches on their surfaces. There's a third rail in the middle here, and the foot platforms do fit onto it, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you do it, and this is really just a suggestion for launching vehicles like the Core Booster like they show on the box, even though most people won't have a 144 Core Booster. The foot platforms are made for the original HGR 78 with its really big feet, so the gun cannon fits nicely into it too with its own bulky feet. I mean, there's really no real way to secure the MS onto these feet platforms, so you're gonna have to engineer your own grip if you really want to play with these. And the travel on it is a little bit limited, and it terminates here at the end, so you can't even buy a second set to extend it and make it longer. But really, this is meant to be an accessory for display, and it's not supposed to be a full working representation, so the purpose of this movement is more for you to have the MS mid-launch in any position you like. And the back wall here is its own piece, and the front and back side actually has a different sculpt, so the designer actually put in a bit of work thinking about how it should look. It plugs into the section here, and it stays in place really well. It's mostly a static detail, and it doesn't have any function besides looking quite nice. And lastly, we have four of these little pieces that you can use to lock the two bases together, and like the box says, you can have them in any orientation you like, and it's really quite self-evident. But more or less, that's what this Bandai Asia MS Hanger has to offer. It really fits the Bandai Asia philosophy, where they really prioritize the value of their products, and they thought ahead about what a customer expected, and more importantly, they thought about what it would take to make a fan happy. And this MS Hanger gives us a clue to why the MS in action and the SD Gundam figure line are so fondly remembered by anyone lucky enough to have them. Now I don't have the other two hangers myself, you know, the one that's now selling on the Gundam base, and I certainly don't have the Mega House Catapult, but I suspect this little hanger right here might measure up really well against either one. Bandai Asia really wanted their fans to be happy, and that's such a rare thing when Bandai back in Japan now can often be so cynical and hyper-commercial. That makes it all the more sad that this was very likely the final product released by Bandai Asia. Maybe they just made things that were too good so they couldn't be allowed to keep doing it, and thinking about that possibility really makes them miss them even more. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. One of these will be the new MS Hanger if I ever get one of them. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.